Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Dean Machine podcast. Today I am going to talk about Ethiopia and what is actually happening there and how this affects the Ummah and how this affects Africa. So let's get right into it. So in the present day Ethiopia, the armed forces have seized control of the city of Mikel. This is the capital of the Tigray region. They had a fierce battle with the central government in Addis Ababa and the regional government in the Tigray region. So in order to understand what is happening in Ethiopia, it's important for us to understand the nature of the forces jostling for the center of power. So the center of power has always been with the Amhara ethnic group. They founded the modern day Ethiopia state, which consists of several ethnicities and various nationalities. In the end of the 19th century, the Abyssinian king Menel Ik II annexed the predominantly Muslim Oromo, Oromo region. Obviously, this was aided by, of course, Britain. He also gained the region of Bani Shankol, which was part of Sudan. And at the end of World War II, Britain handed the region of Ogaden over the over to Ethiopia and that land was part of Somalia so as you can see Muslim lands has been taken to form modern day Ethiopia so the rulership remained in the hands of the Amhara kings of Abyssinia until 1974 when the provisional military administrative council ousted the last emperor and establish a communist state. So obviously that then struck a nerve with America and they got involved because they are the vanguards of capitalism, democracy, and they cannot have a ideology like communism to become prevalent in other countries and states. So they started supporting several liberation movements in and around Ethiopia, specifically in Tigray, Eritrea, Ogaden and Oromo. So with the help of America, the Ethiopian People's Revolution, Revolu Revolutionary Democratic Front got rid of the last Marxist ruler in Ethiopia. And this was done by changing the public opinion from supporting communism to supporting democracy or their ideological capitalism. Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front consisted of the Tigray People Liberation Front. They eventually dominated the government and the state institutions. In parallel to this, the Eritrean, people, liber the Eritrean People's Liberation Front seized power in Eritrea in the same year and declared its independence in 1993. Manes Zenawi, a Tigrayan, continued in power until he died in 2012. He was succeeded by his deputy, Halle Meriam, who, like his predecessor, was an Orthodox, but from the southern provinces. But because of all the ethnicities representing the deep state in Ethiopia, like the Amhara and the Tigray, they were averse towards his leadership and eventually they protested against him, which then led to his resignation. Then a consensus was concluded. Abi Ahmed Ali took office in March 2018 with the backing of America, which was reflected in offering him the Nobel Peace Prize after the after he had visited the Al Burak wall. So most people attribute Abi Ahmed to the Oromo ethnicity, which represents 35% of the Ethiopians, uh, Ethiopian's population due to his Muslim father. But in essence, he actually represents the interests of the Amhara ethnic group, which is 25% of the population because the links to his Christian mother side. So the Amhara used to represent the bulk of the deep state in Ethiopia since the days of the Abyssinian king. So adding to this, Abiy Ahmed is a Protestant, hence why America is backing him, whilst at the same time 
he's supported by the Muslim Oromo ethnic group. Abi Ahmed is the first official from the Oromo ethnic group to be cho chosen by the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. Oh, that was a long, <laughs> long one. For the post of the Prime Minister, after 27 years of being the ruling party, but after April 2018, he turned on his allies within the front and set about purging the government of the old guard. Now, historically, the US has deepened her hegemony over the Horn of Africa region and marginalized France, whose Djibouti military base is the largest in Africa. And since 2002, the US has given Germany a role at the expense of the French. Ethiopia, for her part, is a vital state for America in terms of controlling the African region. America backed her in striking the military pockets in Eritrea and then participated in ending the rift between Ethiopia and Eritrea. Moreover, the rulers of the UAE were instructed to contribute to America's endeavor to deepen her influence in Africa. America managed to corroborate her influence in the Horn of Africa through Djibouti because of where Djibouti is located, which is deemed as the vocal state in terms of energy and maritime security in the Red Sea. This is obviously very vital because of all the minerals and energy sources that Djibouti has. So if you have influence over this, then you have influence over the whole African region. So now domestic struggle may lead to fragmenting Ethiopia and may also expand beyond her borders. But the unity of Ethiopia under the eye of America would continue to represent America's interest due to the intricate ethnic composition in the Horn of Africa and its surrounding regions. If it were to flare up, would change the ge geopolitical situation in the entire region, which America has worked on to maintain stability and remove all rifts between, country, between its countries, obviously under the name of democracy and capitalism, to show about that democracy is a solution. Now, the struggle taking place since the protests of Oromia, which erupted in July 2020, this started as a result of the ruler Abiy Ahmed's undertakings and his rifts with the deep state represented by the political parties, senior military officers and the leaders of the provinces to which backed him to assume power. So it seems that the strong links and interests America has had with President Abiy Ahmed since he headed uh, the Ethiopian intelligence services explain why she has turned a blind eye to the campaign against his opponents, who became a spent force after she had exploited them in the regional struggles with Eritrea and those expulsion for the, from the scene has become a necessity dictated by the US interests in the province as a whole, an agenda which Abiy Ahmed has been implementing, which has led to the political rifts and armed struggle within Ethiopia. Now, the Tigray People Liberation Front is well versed with the US interests and is attempting to sow dissension in the hope of widening the crisis to Eritrea. So you can see that because of its ethnicities and nationalities within Ethiopia, whatever influence uh, a, a, pit, a particular party has will then ultimately influence the region um, um, in Africa. And this is, this is why America is heavily involved in this situation with Ethiopia. So now the Tigray people, they are hoping to widen the crisis to Eritrea, another African country. And to confirm that the, that the Tigrays want to attempt to widen the struggle, um, they have a statement from the Tigray provinces 
um, the president of the Tigray province, in which he said that Eritrea has dispatched soldiers and tanks to support Ethiopia. Hence, this struggle is set to have a major impact and huge fallouts on Eritrea because any revolution in Tigray will extend to Eritrea due to the Tigray ethnicity living there. African newspapers such as Ghana's Daily Graphic reported on 30th November that missiles that were fired by the Tigray uh, People's uh, Liberation Front on Eritrea in mid-November has turned a domestic struggle into a trans-border struggle. Whilst the, uh, the US State Department has published uh, published denotes America's desire to contain the crisis and generate domestic solution and what Abiy Ahmed has carried out purges within the government and what they entailed in terms of armed conflict forms part of the agenda he has been appointed to execute. So you can see that this first and foremost is an excuse for America to get involved in Ethiopia. This is also another excuse for UAE with the normalization with Israel and um, and their war with Iran or battle with Iran, um, you know, and where Djibouti is also located as well. You know, America has also already stated that they want to, they want UAE to be involved as well because Djibouti is close and you, uh, Djibouti is also influenced by Ethiopia and Eritrea. So it all goes in hand in hand. So basically what happened is they'll get the UAE to do the dirty work for them. Yeah. And also it gives also an excuse for America to meddle into their businesses as well. And all, all under the guise of democracy, you see. So first it was a monarchy. And then it was a communist state. And then with the adjusting of power and with um, uh, groups which were developed by America to... Um, make their ideology, which is capitalism, prevail. They funded and supported these democratic groups um, and changed the, the people's hearts and minds. And now it's a more of a capitalist state, a democratic state. But now, because of the, of the situation with all the ethnic uh, groups within Ethiopia, and then obviously these, these issues are flooding into Eritrea, you know, they want to contain, America wants to contain this, to show and exemplify that democracy is the solution because democracy ultimately is a tool to support capitalism. So it is a solution when that works and, and, they, and they get the UAE involved as well, which they also stated they want to get UAE involved. And they also gained Germany, obviously they, they got Germany involved as well through, um, through Djibouti then it will exemplify to all of the uh, all, all the African countries that you know democracy is the way to go because if you think about it Africa has a large Muslim base and because of that um, it is not really that much pro-democracy um, they haven't got a really good handle on it as much as the West have or uh, like in like you know you, you know they want to make it like another Europe kind of thing um, so you can see that um, they, they're trying to tackle the, the, the horn of Africa and use it as a test dummy. So then they can then test it out and then whatever works, then they will then make this, the working system that they've developed through Ethiopia and then um, represent it to the rest of Africa. And then obviously because of the of the links that Ethiopia has with the rest of the, Afri the rest of the African country, it will then influence them as well. So you can see that they're trying to make uh, the West ideology, the American ideology, which is capitalism, to prevail, to make it more predominant, more more dominant than any other ideologies. But as Muslims, we should follow Al Islam. We know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the sovereign we know that he is the ruler and we only abide by what Allah's mother tells us to Allah's mother says in surah nisa verse 105 surely we have revealed the book to you with the truth that you may judge between people by means of that which Allah has taught you and be not an advocate on behalf of the treacherous 
So you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to rule by the Quran. Rule by the Quran and Sunnah. We cannot give leadership to mere men. We can only give leadership to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have to be aware of what's going on in the world. What is going on in terms of how they are affecting the Ummah. The Ethiopian situation is affecting the Ummah how? Because there are a big massive population of Muslims. And if this thing with Ethiopia goes well in America's favour, then these ideas of a democracy, these ideas of of uh, making man the sovereign and not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will vibrate and echo through the African region, through the, uh, through the Muslims and the Muslim, the Muslim youth will grow up to give only leadership towards men and not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how the, the Ummah is getting affected. So we need to be more politically astute, more aware. I understand that most of the time when we hear politics, you think, oh, let's turn off. Well, let's take politics out, out of it. But knowing the affairs of the Ummah or what is affecting the Ummah is an Ibadah. And we need to look at it this way. Not as something that's something abstract or, oh, no, you know what, this is just politics, we're going to keep it. No, no. This is Ibadah. We have to look at it like this. When Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he used to think about the Ummah, he, you know, he to, there's a hadith of his where he says, The one whose main concern in this world has nothing to do with Allah, and whoever does not fear Allah has nothing to do with Allah, and whoever does not care about the Muslims is not one of them. Now, I'm not saying that whoever doesn't read upon what's going around the world and what's affecting the Ummah, uh, I'm not saying that they are not Muslims. Um, but I am saying is the gravity of importance it is to know about what's the situation of the Ummah or how things are affecting the Ummah. Um, these are very important things. And always remember, just it is a, it is a part of our deen. But anyways, this is my take on Ethiopia. Anything evil or bad, it is from me. And anything, anything good, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, please like, please share. This is very important. Um, share this uh, video or podcast to your friends and family and share the rewards. Um, because at the end of the day, we are exposing the plots and plans of the enemies of Islam and we will continue to do so inshallah. So please like and share and subscribe and please make uh, dua for me and my family. Assalamu alaikum.